So the first groove and melody is from the Tin Licking. Quite deep and moody. We will start with the low end by putting a kick first. Kick sample is quite, quite short. So that means that we have to fill space with our basses, which is in this track the case. We have sub layer and kind of a more vintage layer. And for this one, I'm going to use Serum. We are going to create this deep but still smooth sounds. We want something like the triangle wave. And if you go to basic menu, you have this kind of sine triangle shapes that, that sounds quite good actually. This one will be one octave above, so that we have will have brighter part. And let's put the filter on both. Sounds like this. We need one more layer to make it even deeper, so I'm gonna activate the sub, put the one octave down. So what I'm going to do basically go here, make it a bit wider. So the top layer is a bit stereo with unison. Just like that. I'm gonna make the envelopes a bit smoother, really. And we're gonna put this on to mono. And we're gonna go to effects and distortion. Yeah, slight distortion like that and compression as well. So when we change the notes, we will keep the same volume levels. So let's play the melody. With a bit of correction, it looks like this. What we need to do now, side changes the kick. And probably a bit EQ. And together with the kick now. This just means basically we now we have kick and sub, but we have a room for another uh, bass layer. In the original track, they, they had this kind of really vintage cool sound, which we would like to do as well. Again, let's bring the serum. So to get that vintage sound, I'm going to go again, as usual, the basic mini, just like that. And we're going to put one to the one octave above and put both into the filter, but this time we will go for a bit more aggressive filter. And we're gonna give it quite a bit of resonance, just like that. At the moment it's a bit too deep and we need to this sound a bit more plucky, like we need to hear this kind of, just like that, a bit more pluck sound. And then I'm gonna give a bit more release, put it into the mono. It's much more cool sounding thing at the moment. And I'm going to give it a bit drive. A bit attack. Cool, right? And then we're going to go for the effects. And on the effects side, the first thing is a bit distortion. But this time we will get something a bit more aggressive, something like something like this. Of course, we are not going to use it 100% wet, but we will get something. Something like a bit more gritty, and then we're gonna compress it. But this time I'm gonna go for the multiband. Bring the mist down. And maybe... Something like that. And on top of that I'm gonna put another filter so that I can control the high highs after the compression. Just like that. And that means that we're gonna activate the second envelope like this. And I'm gonna put it basically on the border sliders, like we will get this one. First let's go to the original one, original filter here, put it on the cutoff, something like this. Right? And because we don't hear much due to we have another filter here, and we're gonna put the same envelope to other filters. Now we have this really cool sound. We can resonate a bit more. And the, the one thing that I want to do here is like just adding something kind of random shapes. The reason being is that I want to utilize maybe a bit of randomness to sound on the filter. So every hit will be slightly different because I'm gonna put it maybe trip here and then put something maybe like this, right? And put it into the cutoff here. Not too much, a little bit. So it's slightly up, we can even make it like this, right? Something like this. We can bring down this one a little bit. Yeah, I want this resonant sound here, right here. Once we got this, we have to put down the melody now.
and together with the rest of the instruments sounds like this. The one thing that I would like to do to emphasize on this bass a bit more is basically we had the sidechain to the kick. I'm going to take the same sidechain but this time I'm going to sidechain it to bass itself. But this will be super fast. So that initial hit ping will be a bit easier to hear. I'm going to put a bit look ahead. Uh, the one thing that was really cool in the original track that there was a, like a big hole reverb like this one. I can maybe my, make it a bit brighter like this and maybe a bit shorter. And then when this big note hits or the high note hits, the, there was an immediate reverb on top of that. So what I'm going to do, take this one and just activate the reverb here. Maybe put a tail something like this. Maybe this should work. Let's try. Just like that. Nothing really too fancy, just a slight reverb tail. And we play again. Let's put the high end. The first thing will be the off head. So we have a sample sounding like this. Pan to the left. But in the track that hit was always changing a little bit. So what I did, put it on the scale and then you see that sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter. I did it manually. We could have done, put this into the drum rack and do it with the LFO. We will do it in the second track. I want to show different things that you can use in these tracks. And on top of that, we need a bit sharper hi-hat. Most of the samples are just from my sample pack. If you haven't seen that, you will find the link in the description so you can take a look at there. So this one is panned on the right, sounds like this. Simple closed hat, really. So when this goes down, other comes up. This almost acts like a tail of the track. And this is the same idea. Like it's sometimes there, it's sometimes not there, and sometimes shorter, sometimes sometimes faster, uh, or longer. So if we play together, it's like the t t t kind of stuff. And finally, I'm gonna add another tail to the shaker so that we have this full nice high end going on. So I have this one. You can see that I kind of added the fade in so that in the beginning we don't hear it but then it comes the tail so if we zoom out together they look like this right and sounds like this this is really cool nice layered sound and we play all together now the one thing of course we can always do like a group them up slightly probably put an eq to clean up the mod probably on the low end even though there's not much for the glue compression i like to distort the hats a bit to brighten up some sometimes so let's see how it works cool now we have both low end and high end. From there we can just get the clap down, then we can start with the instruments. We don't have really much effect on the clap, so the main idea is getting this initial bright sound and it's a bit too much reverb, something like this. And then on top of that adding this more like an organic sound on top of that to the other side. So together it's like sound and slow vocoder and glue compressor together. And if we play it one more time together. We already can feel this like a deep house-ish, melodic house -ish vibe straight ahead. To create, make the ambience even more deeper is creating this kind of deep pad sound. And this is almost always there for this type of track. So it's an important element, even though you don't, you, you don't even really realize it. So I'm going to bring in the serum. So what we are looking for is kind of form analog sound. So to get that, what I'm going to do first. So if I go kind of, it doesn't really matter that much, but let's get something like this. And then I think it has this, yeah, exactly. Something like this should be fine. But to get a bit more of the Swish vibe, I'm going to pick the second oscillator. Let's put both of them one octave down because we want this darker sound. And for this one, I'm going to go for more like a sine wave style. And here we have this kind of sine 
triangular wave stuff. Uh, and on top of that, we're going to put into the filter. And if I play, right? And to make it more like a deep and wide, we're going to activate unison. This, so you can immediately feel the ambient growing bigger. The one thing that I'm going to do, of course, fix this envelope a bit. Give it release. Maybe a bit the higher. Bring down the detune. Just like that. Let's go to the effect. I want to compress a little bit. Because it is phasing slightly so that the volume may go up and down. So compression can you can see it here, like it's moving up and down. And then a bit reverb. And this is more or less ready, like it's a cool small tiny sound but you always hear it or let's say even though you don't really hear it you can feel it so on top of that we have this eq overdrive and a side change to kick let's put it here but we have this pump going on so let's play the melody and come back And a bit of slight tinkering, it looks like this. And together with the track. Like it's low in the volume, it's on the background, but it has this kind of really nice dimension. Once we have done this, we need to add the second pad sounds, but these are more driving and in the front. So I would call them like elite pads or poly pads. Let's put that, let's bring in the seven first. So in this sound, we are aiming for a richer sound, but we don't want this super huge sound. So that's the reason we are going to use still a bit more tamed oscillators. And what I mean by tame is like a bit more triangle-ish like this, right? And I'm going to pick another triangle. I'm just going to pick something else to make it a bit like a different. So we're going to get something probably like this. So kind of triangle, right? And put into the filter. So it's not Rack Soul Tooth, but it still has a grid in it that we can play around. So I'm going to put in the two here and I'm going to put in the three so that we can get the things a bit around. But I don't want to utilize the whole stereo field, I will say. The first thing I'm going to do is bring this down. And I'm going to go to global and bring this down. Maybe something like this is fine. And I'm going to give a bit resonance, a bit of fat, so that the low end could be a bit feather, a bit of drive. Maybe close a bit more. And all those layers, of course. And then we're going to go to the effects side, put a bit of compression. I'm going to boost the highs a little bit with an EQ, like this. And then finally, after the EQ, a slight reverb. Something like this. The fun thing with this sound is in the track, I think it was automated manually, but we will just automate or the modulate it instead here. So it starts like a really tame sound like this. And then it opens up, but it's not really opening up, so also changing the timbre a little bit. So what I'm going to do, like if you put this in the wavetable position and if you play it, you see that there is like a more complex waveforms right there. And if you make it like a really long, I think it was two bar or maybe it was in four bar to be honest. So slow the opening up and the same thing we can do in the second one as well, right? We can open up slightly less and then we can open up slightly more. On top of that, the sound was getting also a bit more detuned, creating this kind of tension. So I'm going to take this and put it into detune as well, so that while it's opening up, it will be more and more weird. Just like that. It's basically the same uh, chord progression that we did before, so I'm going to just move it down like this. 
and then we're gonna fix a bit and together with the track on top of that we need to side change the kick and let's play it together now really really cool effect but on top of this there was also kind of a flute layer and uh, kind of making things a bit more inter interesting so we're gonna do the same thing here let's put the serum this is a bit simple sound so we don't need to start to, and basically a square wave like this with a slight envelope and a bit distortion hyper dimension and eq nothing more really So basically making whole path progression a bit more interesting. So if we play together with the rest now. More or less we have the basic elements ready. Uh, the one thing that we forget to add is that kind of a sound background white noise effect so what i'm going to do is use a sample so this is just a hi-hat sound real i put it into the sim sampler and put it into back and forward mode if i just move it here so it goes back and forward to make it a bit smoother a bit glue compression a distortion eq side chain to the kick this kind of background pumping effect, right? And this is quite, quite low volume. So you barely hear it, but if you play it together, without, it just adds up to this pumping feel. Tiny detail, but this, these tiny details really add up to get this really nice sounding track. So what I'm going to do now, go back and see what we need on top of this and arrange everything a bit smoother and then we can take a look one more time like i said i arrange a little bit so that we don't have the those extra pads at the beginning and then it comes in and of course on top of that we forget these metal shakers they are panned quite to the left so they give my kind of excited on the kind of a chorus here and then some vocals from the original and we forget one more layer which was the rhodos layer really and in the beginning it's a bit more dominant rhodos oftentimes means that sine, sine waves uh, a bit maybe unison on top of that they are a bit slightly distorted and so on so i had created this patch slight distortion chorus and compression and reverb and a slight eq But let's do start the end and I can show around a little bit. Yeah, you can also see the automations slightly. So let's go. And yeah, that was it. Moody and smooth track, quite the best well. Now let's take a look at the second track. The second one is one of my favorite. It's kind of a track that you would listen to when you are watching the sunset or having a bus trip.
we will start with a kick. I have a kick sample like this. It's a bit too clicky, so I'm gonna get an auto T. The problem here at the moment is just compressing too much. We are gonna zero out everything like this, and we're gonna zoom zero this one and this one and all the rest. And I'm gonna I'm and I'm going to slightly compress the highs here. Something like this is enough. And uh, let's put it for the floor. Now we have this. And then the track had this really nice groovy tom. We are going to be very resource efficient here. I'm going to use the same same kick sample to make the tom. Thing is, the tom part of the thing is a bit too clicky for a tom sound. So I'm going to cut this off like this and then smooth this up maybe around this. So let's hear how it sounds. Not bad. We can maybe get a bit tom here. Somewhere around here sounds nice. And I'm going to also put some uh, EQ to cut, cut super highs. And then probably super lows as well. Can add a bit of glue compression. And maybe we can volume this down. And let's add a groove. So what I did, I also shortened up a bit more here because I'm putting it right in front of the kick. So it sounds like this together. This really basic kick and tom, I would say. And on top of that, to make everything a bit glued together, we are going to add a bass. So what we are going to do, basically go to the templates, pick the mini mono. Idea is basically getting this kind of a sawtooth layer on first and then bringing down the cutoff so we get this dark noise. Something like that, but I'm going to decrease the decay and sustain a little bit so that we have a bit better envelope on top of that. And on the second oscillator, I'm going to put it like around triangles wave, so it will be just more like a sine wave sound, more or less harmonics in the sound. But I'm not going to use it to the full, so I'm going to volume up slightly like this. And I'm going to put it one octave down. You can hear this deep uh, sound in it. And I'm going to give slight emphasis and slight envelope and we're going to fix this uh, envelopes because the envelope to used here you can hear it now so i'm bring it down and put a bit release a bit sustain and finally i'm going to put a super slight chorus just to make it a bit deeper so that the track feels a bit deeper as well I'm going to put it into mono here and give it a slight glide. And fix the envelopes a bit more. Just a bit of attack. Now we have a cool sound. Let's play the notes. And a little bit correction, it looks like this. Quite cool, playful sub bass, I would say. I don't want to go super crazy here. The only thing that I'm considering is adding an EQ. We are going to cut to super highs. And then, of course, super lows as well. And on top of that, I'm going to add a compression. Because we are moving up and down all the time, we want to stabilize that sound slightly. And let's take up the makeup gain. And finally, a sidechain compression. And of course, we have to sidechain to do tom as well because tom is also still quite deep so i want to hear it more clearly so easiest way to do it basically is side change the tom as well together they sound like this now we'll come back and probably balance it a bit more later on depending on the other things on the track uh, because we don't have anything else at the moment it always sounds a bit more bassy because we don't have anything to balance the track and because of that we're going to fix the high end right afterwards the first thing that we need is like eight hats i will say it's just continuously bringing pss, 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 pss. let's call this guy's low end by the way sounds like this Classic closed hi hat ish shaker sound, I will say. The one thing that I want to start immediately is put an LFO because I want to play around with the length and I want to make it also a bit more transient. 
So cut this off, we'll give it a fade in like this, and then to the fade in, we're gonna play it around. Of course, not like that. I'm thinking like maybe putting up and bring the depth down, bring the offset down. And if you play it now, with correction, looks like this, and together. It just sound at the end of the bar. It gives really nice ambience, I will say. But it's a bit too dark because we will have a lot of other things. I want this kind of bright and lively sound like this. Together. Cool sound really. Uh, the second thing is just regular shaker sound with the offbeat. So let's fix that. So it sounds like this. Again, I want to do the same thing, put an LFO, but this time probably I can play something else and put a vocoder to extend the length a little bit. So with LFO, EQ, and vocoder. Together again one more time. Just to make it a bit more obvious, I want to have this a bit smooth transient on top of the shaker, like smooth closed hi-hat probably. Let's put that. I just grabbed this from my sample pack and put a slight EQ and it turns the shaker like this. But now the shaker is a bit too short. In the original track it was longer, so I'm gonna find the tail that passes the shaker to make it a bit more washy. To layer the shaker layer properly, you have to play it together with the other two guys so to hear actually what it is adding. So we will start like this. And the first thing that I want to do, I don't want to have this transients. I'm gonna cut this off or the smooth it up a little bit. And then probably a bit fade out. And a bit EQ, this one was copied from the other guy. Maybe a bit here. And vocoder to again extend the tail a bit without this guy all together one more time by the way if you are curious about more detailed presentation how to make your hi-hats a bit more entertaining we have actually just released track together with the bebeta and whole project file is actually available for the people who buys the track so if you want to support me or if you want to get hands on a track that is doing pretty good on the beatboard. I will put the link here so you can take a look. And this one time offer really to get full project of a release track. But I think more or less this is enough. Now we have done this, I'm thinking adding the clap so that we have this kick and clap groove going on. But clap part was not that simple. There was a lot of different layers. I think it could be one single sample, but it was a layered sample, I will say. We will lay ourselves. The first thing will be just getting a, a cool clap. So I have this clap sample sounding like this. It's a cool sample because it already has both clap and then clap and noise layer. It was quite close to the really the origin track, but we have to fix two simple things. The first thing is like it's more clappy than snare, so we don't hear that initial transient. In the origin track, you can definitely hear there's a snap in it. So we're gonna layer this with just the analog snap uh, snare. Just an analog snare from my sample pack, together. And the one final thing was like just another tail to make it more clappy, like more organic tail on top of this. This is another analog clap sound, but it is very clean, like you can almost hear each flap sound inside it, but we don't need this part. What I did is basically getting this so, and layering them up in the initial, we hear the original uh, clap, and then we have this analog part on top of that, together. And together with the track. I think the one thing that could be a bit better, I'm gonna group them up and put a glue compressor just to stick them together and maybe put an EQ because I feel like they're out of things because of that noise layer. I'm gonna start by cutting off. And then we're gonna glue them.
really cool, right? I would say this quite basic, but it's quite essential at the same time as well. That means that actually we can start with the instruments a little bit. So the, I will start straight ahead the hook of the track, the main thing that really makes a track different from other tracks. And I always feel that way when I listen to Lane 8 track because he always kind of had a strong hook that you probably remember right after uh, when you listen to the track for the first time. And this one is actually brass sound. So to do that, we're going to bring a diva. So it had this vintage sound, vintage brass sound in it. So what I'm going to do, go for the template and bring something like Jup 8 and then we end up this guy what i'm going to do change this to so what we are going to do is basically use a single oscillator so the brass sounds often means that you have a smooth attack and short sustain that you can hear that each hit so in this case we have single oscillator which is good and we're going to bring this down and put the envelope like this so that we have a bit darker sound but that is not enough so we will start with envelope and bring down the sustains i'm going to i'm going to put it really small like this a shorter attack so we can hear that and then i'm going to start with envelope to the same thing bring this down give a bit uh, release and then i'm going to use the keyboard so that when we play the higher, higher notes it will open up a bit more we can start to hear this the problem is attack here so we can open this up Like it's already getting there immediately but we're going to fine tune a little bit uh, the first thing that I'm going to go for a chorus the classic one of course we don't need that much we're going to bring this down a little bit something like this and I'm going to give a slight plate uh, it will be quite dark because I'm going to use another reverb outside of the synthesizer can almost barely hear it I'm gonna open the keyboard here. and if you bring this down and during the track the thing was I think the cutoff envelope uh, amount and the main envelopes are always played around so that it has this nice automation on top of that uh, once we have done this we will add some effects so the first thing to do is just to make it a bit wider we are going to put an echo the idea is basically utilizing the house effect so the easiest way to do that is take this off take this off so that we can use the time and i'm going to turn off the filter and then we're going to bring down the left to the one second and this one maybe around 14 15 something like it's i feel like sweet spot and then we're going to bring this down and i'm going to put the ping pong mode you hear how much it opens up somewhere around this is enough another thing that we can do is probably a bit eq just cut the super lows something like this so let's play now the notes the melody so that we have it that is nailed down as well If you're enjoying the video up to now and if you feel like it's adding something to you please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it helps really a lot a bit of playing and fixing around it looks like this and it sounds like this now this beautiful gorgeous sound i will say i really love it and then there are other things in track this is really beautiful sounds some of them you have to really pay attention to hear it but the first one is a bit easier to hear and i would call it like the organ sound we start with this one the way i like to do it i'm going to go for the templates here and then i'm going to get june 60 here but this time uh, we will change this guy over here to bite because we're going to cut off some of the things and then boost a bit to be in the middle area so it will give us another resonant sound or the resonant uh, filter on top of this guy so what happens here is basically we're gonna get something like this so that we have a lot of that uh, soft tooth inside a square wave sound that weird sound 
which is really, really cool. The other thing that we are going to do is put it into the pulse mode. Something like this. And then we're going to exaggerate the peak and cut all the way. So we get this really cool sound. And then we're going to bring the cutoff and same idea here, another resonance. You can start to hear this organ sound. Right? And then we're going to put it in the clean. A bit keyboard. And I'm going to fix the envelopes a little bit more so that it's a bit smoother in the bin. A bit decay, bring this down. A bit release. Right? And then I'm, what I'm going to do is uh, give a bit plate reverb. Of course, it's a bit too much. And then a bit chorus. We have this really, really cool sound, I would say. Once we have done this, we have to put some additional effects on top of that to get this really gritty sound. So the first overdrive to really exaggerate the mid area. And then EQ8, just focusing on this area, compression. The old sound is more like a, let's say, like a brick. It's not having too much uh, dynamic, which wouldn't have wouldn't happen in the organ sound, right? And then a random auto pan. Pretty cool sound, and it makes even more sense when you play the melody on top of that. So let's do that. A little bit fixing, looks like it as usual, and together with the track now. And there's another layer on top of this one, another kind of organ string type of sound. Uh, to contrast the main idea. I'm gonna just smack it down and show you around instead of going through one more time. This time we are using the other module in Diva and we are basically utilizing the triangle and sine wave. So basically getting this super guitar sound. If, if you compare it to the other one that we have made basically. The idea is still the same but a bit less resonant, a bit more, a bit less drastic uh, envelopes and a bit phaser on top of that. <laughs> cool sound, but the main magic happens really with adding this out of effects first pedal. It almost turns into a guitar. The main reason is again using the sine waves, like a guitar is kind of a sine wave, and then using a pedal on top of that. And cutting this middle layer. And pushing into the back now with the reverb. Maybe a bit less and side change the kick. So let's play the melody so that you have an idea about what is going on. More or less we have the groove ready. The one thing that needs now is just adding the small effects here and there and then maybe putting that vocal phrases just between transitions so that everything is done. So let me quickly put everything here, come back. So what happened is like I just added a shaker loop, sounds like this. Side chain the kick. Uh, and on top of that we had these tom sounds really from my sample pack, simple toms. I did to do a bit reverb and then white noise on top. And then of course vocals a little bit. I've been staring at a wall. Something like this. And yeah, and making it a bit more. Yeah, the 
yes, I forget. The most important thing, like I mentioned earlier, is that really automating your hook sound, the sound that your track depends on. In this case, it was that breath sound. So what happened here is I'm automating it all the time. Like this is the envelope attack. And then we are automating the filter frequency modulation. So getting aggressive and then supporting the cutoff, opening up the cutoff, moving quite a bit around and then even decay and then even release. So a lot of things are moving around. The sound is really like reacting to the other sound in the track. So you will understand a bit better when I play the start then. So let's take a look. I've been staring at a wall Yeah, this is really, really beautiful track. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.